Okay, hello everybody. Welcome to Korean Atlanta Mentorship. And uh, in this video, I'm going to talk about, quote, the secret to getting rich people to trust you. So one of the things that I, I, I like to do is record um, or try to remember my different experiences um, with different demographics. And one of the things that was most surprising to me is that the people that I thought I would have the most difficult time with were the most easiest people to work with, right? So people with a lot of money, right, are the, in my opinion, are the easiest people to work with compared to people who don't have a lot of money. And that's not only in terms of just, you know, they'll pay you, but it, and also in terms of like praise, like, if I work with a really, really rich person, I'm talking about like really, really rich, um, they will tell me I am the most awesome thing on, on you know, I have, I have written letters, testimonials about how I'm so awesome from really, 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 really rich people. Um, yet when I talk to people who are not at that level of wealth, and again, we're not, you know, to me, whether you have money or, or not doesn't really matter to me. It's, it's more about your character, but I just kind of noticed some things, you know, uh, from my own life experience that people who have a lot of money, like lots of money, when, over the years, again, you know, this isn't something I figured out yesterday, but over the, the various years when I work with them, um, they're so, number one, they're so much more easier to work with. And number two, they they praise me to death. In fact, for the longest time, I I used to have these issues of trust because you know a lot of people that I know, right, include, just includes people from my hometown, would tell like try to convince me that I'm an idiot, right? It's not what, until I started working with really really rich people that when they told me that I'm super awesome, that I realized, whoa, like. That's that's actually not the case, right? But but you know the way I could kind of compare this, and this isn't a direct analogy or correlation, is when I first started to come, or when I first came to the city of Atlanta, I was kind of aiming low, right? I was kind of aiming low, and I was like, I just want a minimum wage job. In fact, it must be, it'll probably, you know, I don't want to do you know the hard work to get a a higher paying job because you know, it's a minimum wage job, right? Like it should be easy to get. And I pretty much got rejected from all minimum wage jobs, right? I remember like every time I like wanted a waiter job, they like grill me and act like I couldn't do the job because I'd have 10 years of experience waitering. I'm like, what the, f you know what I mean? <laughs> like, and then when you kind of just move into different things that were a lot, you know, things where a lot more money is traditionally associated with, I realized, wow, there's like, you know, you know, you know, the impression I got, you know, dealing with these minimum wage jobs is that that doing this eight dollar and twenty five cent an hour task would be this Herculean thing where it's so hard. Yet when I kind of go into something else that has a lot more money tied into it, man, people like they praise me to death, right? And that's the same thing with rich people and non rich people too. Like, I didn't know this, right? This is something that was, uh, uh, like, took me maybe, like, five years to figure out. And, and this is why, you know, you've heard this me talk about this in other videos about, you know, if you want to be rich, don't work with poor people. That's, like, one of the biggest mistakes that, that you can uh, make is not only because they don't have any money, but it's also because of their attitudes, right? And I think a lot of other people um, who have made a lot more money than I have have made this observation and you know I just happened to come across this video <laughs> by Mr. Daniel Alley uh five reasons why the rich avoid the poor and I haven't watched the entire video yet but I mean just from life experience I kind of already know what he's going to talk about and you know another uh quote that like I kind of uh like to repeat um from Mr. Jack Ma who is basically the Jeff Bezos of Amazon says that the worst people to serve are the poor people. Give them free. They think it's a trap. Tell them it's a small investment. They'll, they'll say they can't earn that much. Tell them to come in big. They'll say no money. Tell them try new things. They'll say no experience. Tell them it's traditional business. They'll say hard to do. Tell them it's a new business model. They'll say it's MLM. Tell them to run a shop. They'll say no freedom. Tell them run new business. They'll say no expertise. 
they do have something in common. They love to ask Google, listen to friends who are as hopeless as them. Uh, they think more than a university professor and do less than a blind man. Again, Mr. Jack Ma from China, Jeff Bezos of China. And um, it's, it's, it's a lot to think about. I, I don't necessarily, I wouldn't necessarily put it this way, but I will tell you that if you want to be rich, don't work with poor people. In fact, don't even work with most middle class people, right? Work with really, really rich people. And one of the biggest problems why people, you know, have, an, have such a hard time working with rich people is because, they, you know, your average person doesn't see them as an actual human being, right? So this is going to be, quote, the secret to getting rich people to trust you is treat them like an actual human being. And um, again, I, you know, I have like tons of letters and praises from really rich people of that, that I'm super awesome. Yet if you talk to people back in my hometown, uh, you know, the things, the, the things that they would tell me is that I'm a person who has no life experience and I don't know what I'm doing. Right. And that took maybe 10 years out of my sales um, you know, the wind for my sales, uh, because I actually believed them. And when, when I started to just talk to different people, you notice a trend that, Hey, it's the rich people who actually trust me the most. Right. And one of the things that I was really self, you know, I don't know if this is just like me being really self-conscious about this, but I don't like to treat different people differently based on what their income level is. Right. You know, if you're rich, you're rich. If you're poor, you're poor, whatever. Um, you know, but if you have a problem that we need to solve, let's go ahead and do that, right? And, uh, you know, as you gain more money, you realize that you just have a different level of problems um, that, you know, you want to throw money at to get solved. So one of the things that, that, that uh, issues that a lot of rich people have is that there are problems in their life that they can't throw money at that, that easily – to get solved. And so what you have to be is just essentially a problem solver, right? So just two, two little nuggets there, treat them like actual human beings. And number two, actually try to solve problems. In fact, solving problems is the easiest way to get rich in, in society, in, in a capitalistic uh, economy. Now there are ton, tons of useless products and services out there, but if you're able to provide a real solution in the marketplace, to people who have money and treat them like normal human beings, right? They'll want to do business with you. This is why, like, you know, recently, um, actually, it's been a year. I can't even believe it's been a year. I met this older Korean gentleman, and, um, you know, I told him, like, I have no, you know, I was trying to start a, a real estate um, uh, investing, you know, educational group among Korean people. And uh, I, I don't know how I happened to meet this gentleman. But, you know, he's been doing real estate since the 90s in the United States. Korean immigrant, very impressive, millions of dollars in, in the bank. And he told me he'd fund real estate deals for me, right, on day one. And he showed me his smartphone with like, hey, here's all the mil millions of dollars that I have. And the thing is, is that um, I was always a little bit worried because I don't have any deals because I'm too lazy to find them, Right. But the thing is, he could just tell I'm a person of character who does not, who hasn't actually even even impressed that he has a lot of money. But I do want to saw, you know, my my main concern is how can I, how can I serve this person, right? How can I serve this person? And I was just wor worried, like, man, I'm not even doing that much marketing to be able to like get enough deals in my pipeline because my 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 plan was just to get like one deal every couple of years and then have a house paid off, right? It's a very lazy plan. But again, why is this gentleman offering me millions of dollars of funding? It's because number one, I see him as a normal person with a lot of money. Number two, I'm trying to see what his problem is, right? And again, if you ever deal with rich people problems, um, one of the things I always talk about is they always get a little bit nervous that they have money in the bank because uh, it's going to be eaten away by inflation. So they'd rather have it grow at some like, you know, 10 to 12 percent or whatever. And the guy is a smart dude because he's doing like Bitcoin and stuff and he's much older than me. And I don't know any of that, but he trusts me. Right. 
So again, let me just reemphasize, what is the secret to getting rich people to trust you? Number one, you treat them like a normal human being. And number two, you try to be a problem solver, right? Like, like think of all the BS that a lot of people who become rich have to deal with, right? See, the, the problem is, is that once you get to that other side, it's kind of like being a landlord. You know, when I first put my first uh, oh, rental house on the market, there were so many people out there who, who were just playing games with me and they could not just get themselves to say, hey, I will give you rent for in exchange for housing, right? Even in a housing shortage, right? And you know the person who I gave, uh, 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 essentially gave the lease to, to the rich person who wanted to give me a lot of money, right? And they, they were really appreciated of me. See, it, it all, you know, it's a pattern that, that makes sense to me even though I don't even, I myself don't even understand how it works, right? Again, lots of lessons we can learn from here. A, if you want to get rich, just deal with rich people. To gain the trust of rich people, treat them like normal people, right? And then number three, be a problem solver, you know? And that's actually true with any demographic that you work with. Being a problem solver is is how you make money, right? And people will gladly hand, hand over their money for you to solve their problems. And the richer that they are, the more easier it is to um, give, like, it's easier for them to hand over that money. Whereas sometimes when you deal with, like, middle class and probably poor people, uh, they ain't going to hand you their money, right? They're going to make any sort of excuse. Now, I'm not looking down upon poor people. Whether you have money or not, I'm always willing to work with you. But the problem is, is that, you know, sometimes you make the best offer and to the poor people, right? And kind of like what Mr. Daniel Alley says uh, here in this video, you make, you know, give the, the poor people the best advice. They, they, they don't take it. It's, it's the same problem that I've had when it comes to like juicing and stuff. Uh, I'm the only person that I know in my entire vicinity who does like juicing, right? Like I've given juice machines that are like $300, $400 to uh, people who say, oh, I want to do this. They never even touched it. Right. So I'm just kind of used to like giving away three hundred, four hundred dollar juice machines to people who are not really, you know, uh, I hate to say this, really not worthy of it. Right. You know, there's that they're saying don't throw pearls to swine. Got to be a little bit conscious of that. But yeah. So hopefully <laughs> um, this video made sense. But if it doesn't, it's because it's like two thirty a.m. right now. And I'm, I, I actually wanted to go to sleep early. And you ever those, have those moments where you sleep for like two hours and then you magically wake up? It's happening to me in the summer again. And uh, so I figure, well, why don't I just crank out a video before I go to sleep again? But yes, yes. How to gain... Uh, what's a, let, me, let me read this again. How to... It's the secret to getting rich people to trust you. That's what we talked about today. All right. Well, that's it for today. Um, have a great night and we'll speak next time.